Assalamu alaikum, I'm Hina Ajaz. Welcome to Pakistan. The guest I am going to introduce to you today is uh, from New Zealand. The minute I heard that he's from New Zealand, I don't know, cricket comes to my mind. Of course, when we talk about England, when we talk about Australia, when we talk about New Zealand, somehow I feel there's a cricket match that's about to take place. And yes, Andrew McLean is, um, or has been here, came here, to cover the Australian, the famous Australian series that took place in Pakistan. He has been associated with the radio industry, he has his own podcast currently, he's an English teacher, he's been associated with financial services while he lived in London for a good 13 years. But for the past 3.5 years, he's been stationed in Bali. He seems to be enjoying his life well. And uh, what can I say? He's here now in Pakistan. Let's see how much uh, of a good time has he had here. I welcome Andrew McLean on this side. Hi, Andrew. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you, Hina. Pleasure to be here. Thank uh, big you. Big fan and of your show. <laughs> good to hear that. Thank you so much. Yasser Nassar, the very talented photographer. He's a filmmaker and a traveler. So, of course, he fits into that profile very, very well when it comes to Welcome to Pakistan. Welcome and Aslam alaikum Yasser. Welcome Aslam, thank you. Yasser very much. has photographed uh, many commercial sports of Pakistan and not just that, his expertise, his talent expands uh, while uh, photographing uh, some of our traditional sports as well. Well, what are they? I'd like Andrew to also understand what are these sports and we'll show you some of, the, some of those photographs as well. So the immensely talented photographer is here with us. He's going to share his travel stories. Andrew has managed to travel to some of um, uh, some very interesting places in Pakistan, uh, in the up north. But if he's missed something, I'm sure, Yasser, you may be able to fill him in, right? Definitely. So yes, I do have help today. <laughs> so that's wonderful because you see, it's always nice or nicer to have two opinions. Right, so Andrew, what a life, amazing life. You grew up in New Zealand. Yeah. Now New Zealand's uh, roughly, let's say, around 71% of the population is, um, are Europeans. Yes. And um, most of them were immigrants, they moved there and uh, obviously obviously the numbers expanded so for you london must not be very new not really culturally it's very very similar right. um, moving there as i did uh, back in 2005 you know I, I left i had a job in working in financial services in new zealand and uh, moving over to england and joining a bank there was a, a very kind of seamless and easy process and then, you know, every, culturally as well, culturally, I mean, daily life, I mean, there's differences, of course, because of the scale of London. Right. But, you know, most you can eat fish and chips there, for example, you know, <laughs> so you don't, it's pretty similar. But probably the, the big thing was, is it's, it's just a melting pot, which New Zealand isn't, you know, so many people from different cultures, you know, the huge Asian community there doesn't really exist in New Zealand and so... You have a very small portion of Asians yeah, in New Zealand. Small, yeah. Roughly, I'd say less than 10%. Oh, well under 10%. Well under yeah. 10%. Right. I'd like our audience to see a few glimpses of uh, New Zealand. If you haven't been there, I'm sure you'd be tempted after seeing these images. Let's see them.
Right, so that was a short report prepared on New Zealand. It wasn't, um, it, it wasn't large enough to cover the scale of the place. So how often do you visit New Zealand now? Probably once a year on average. Um, in the last uh, couple of years I've been, been, I think she's been six months in New Zealand uh, at the end of uh, 2020, start of 21. So um, visiting family, because uh, I had, I just hadn't spent a lot of time there. So I spent six months. I actually worked on a, a ferry as a, as a cabin attendant, and that was a totally different experience. But sadly, because of the, the pandemic, uh, all of the passengers were, were New Zealanders, so I didn't really get to meet many tourists, if right. any. And New Zealand's economy greatly thrives upon tourism as well. Absolutely. I mean, apart from our dairy and meat exports, I mean, tourism would probably be the next biggest um, you know, generator of income. Uh, it's just been completely decimated. I mean, as, as everyone has right. been, as Bali has been, but... Uh, it's Bali, very... has been, Bali, or rather Indonesia, has been greatly affected. Yes. But they are, now they're catching up domestic, because you see, uh, from what I hear, and we had the ambassador, uh, the Indonesian ambassador to Pakistan on this show, and he mentioned specifically that domestic tourism within Indonesia has increased extensively during COVID. That's true. Yeah, they, the government launched one particular kind of, it was not so much a scheme as much as a marketing campaign called Work From Bali. So basically the theory was that if you're not going to your office in Jakarta, why don't you come and work in Bali? And I think Absolutely. that did pretty well. Why not? Why not? So, have you been to uh, New Zealand? It's one of the destinations that everyone wants to visit because New Zealand is extremely beautiful. Well, Yasser, don't you think when we um, hear New Zealand, cricket comes to our minds? Of That's course. only natural because you have Pakistan versus New Zealand, New, against New Zealand and uh, cricket and that's something that we associate with. But there's another thing, when I look at a cow, <laughs> when I look at a dairy product, I think of New Zealand. Because you have some of the best dairy products. Yeah, I mean, I remember once I was in Vietnam in some pretty remote place and, you know, stumbled across some New Zealand butter, which <laughs> kind of brought a tear to the eye. That reminds you of home, right? Of course, yeah. <laughs> have you seen the dairy products? You know? Of course, of course. We have heard about uh, a lot about uh, the dairy products. You see, the, uh, the dairy industry in Pakistan massively modernized in the past few years. I'd say roughly around a decade now, touching a decade. And many modern uh, dairy farms uh, started importing the Australian Holstein cow. So that's how I think a lot of people in Punjab are now aware of uh, uh, good quality dairy products. And they've looked into some uh, Australian um, cows, New Zealand produced dairy products. So, so we, we are now reasonably well educated in that sector. I'd say that. So where all did you um, travel in Punjab and up north? Uh, I haven't really traveled in Punjab. I've only really been in Lahore, um, mainly because of the, the test match. Um, I would have considered going to the border ceremony, but I've actually seen it from the other side in 2008. From India? Yeah. You did? Yeah, I did. Well, try I, and see it from this side as well. And a different perspective, right? Yes, why not? Um, well, I'm actually running out of time now, but uh, maybe I'll do it tomorrow. When do you leave? Uh, just right after the show. Are you serious? No, the next day. <laughs> so may maybe, maybe I can do it tomorrow, Hina. Yeah, well, you can come back for it. Yeah. So that'll be amazing. So you went up north as well. Where all did you go? So I left Rawalpindi and Islamabad and drove to Swat Valley. Uh, stopped for lunch for a chapi kebab. It was amazing. Um, liked it? Oh yeah, but I tried it first in Raja Bazaar in, Pind in, in Pindi and right. I, I just, it was just mouth-wateringly beautiful. Right. So I've kind of got addicted to that now. Um, and then I, I went skiing in Malam Jabba. Yeah. Uh, great, great slope. Um, the, the snow was still really good. I was surprised. It was, it was excellent snow. Um, and because most of the Pakistanis who were there were really there for the view and the experience, the slope was pretty much all, for, all to me, so that was pretty special. Uh, and then from there, I travelled um, out of Swat through Khoyastan and ultimately up to Hunza, where I joined a, a trip, uh, an organised tour, um, 
and well you were the group of people yeah a group uh, they were it was a tr tour that started in Lahore and they drove there by by bus right so around 20 or so Pakistanis all Pakistanis yeah mainly from Lahore some from Karachi and then a couple of sisters from Quetta who, who well actually... Andrew I'd like to find out how was that experience in terms of traveling with people because that's what they say when you travel with somebody or some people that's when you re really get to know them so I'm sure you must have formed an opinion about Pakistanis as well then I'd like to find out about that and I'd like Yasser to recommend you a few other places which you may have missed or should be on your bucket list for next time but right after this short break I can't remember the last time I actually paid for something. Are you serious? I'm, I'm deadly serious. That is so good to hear. Google some photos and I saw the image of Fairy Meadows and it's like, wow, that looks super cool. What are your favorite destinations in Pakistan? Look, every destination is my favorite. We have Andrew McLean with us and uh, Yasser Nassar. Andrew is from New Zealand but lives in Bali. He's been covering the Australian series, cricket series in Pakistan. He has his own podcast. I'd like to find out more about his podcast and what's going on in his mind while being in Pakistan. What all is he going to narrate on that podcast? We must find out. And the things that uh, Yasser would or sh rather should recommend to Andrew that he's missed seeing in Pakistan because Yasser is a photographer he's seen many more things and from a different angle and perspective so coming back to you Andrew you travel with a bunch of Pakistanis day and night with them right how was that it was, it was brilliant um, because for the first few days I was just with a driver and actually the the director of the company so I had two traveling companions um, but they were guides so it was a totally different experience, of course, to join a tour. And, and normally I'm a pretty reluctant to join tours, but I just thought that's going to be great. And um, it was mainly youngish couples who kind of kept to themselves. <laughs> but then there was a couple of sisters from Quetta and we just got on famously. And so right. um, it, it, was, it, was, it was really it was really good. I'm, I'm so pleased. I so did you that. did end up making friends. Yeah, uh, they actually live Thank in Thank God they, all of them weren't honeymooners. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, yeah, they, they, they're from Quetta, but they live in Lahore. So they've also been great hosts while I've been here. So what's your opinion of Pakistanis and about Pakistan in general after these few days that you've spent here? What do you think? Well, as far as the country goes, um, I, I hadn't really thought that much about it. I think the only thing that I'd done was Google some photos and I saw the image of Fairy Meadows and it's like, wow, that looks super cool. Right. Um, it's probably not quite the right time to go there um, at the moment, but, you know, that was the image I had in my mind. And, you know, beyond that, I. I was going to be watching cricket. I, made, I had no plans. I booked the first night in, in Islamabad and that was it. So everything has been a bonus. I've absolutely loved my time here. Did you expect this kind of hospitality? Hospitality wise, let me tell you this. I can't remember the last time I actually paid for something. Are you serious? I'm, I'm deadly serious. That is so good to hear. Like, for example, um, in Gilgit, in the morning I was flying out of uh, Gilgit, I went uh, to buy some tea on and just on the side of the street um, and I went to pay, he said, I'm sorry, you're my guest, okay? And then later that day in Islamabad, it was in a, you know, a, a burger place, I'm sure you know the, the whole debate about pindies and burgers and all that. <laughs> um, I haven't quite worked out where I land on that, but the same thing happened. I'd watched the cricket for a few hours, he says, you're my guest. And that has been consistent while I've been here. How lovely is I that? have never experienced that anywhere in the world. So I'm sure you're coming back again soon. Yeah, well, um, yeah, maybe I would like to add to the 70 odd countries I've been to, but Pakistan is, is pulling me already. Um, the people and the opportunity. I think there's a lot of it. A lot of places to explore adventure-wise so, here so as well. So the feel-good factor, where would you rate or rank Pakistan out of 10? 11. 
very good thank you thank you so much that's very kind of you so yeah sir you were born in lahore yes so you've seen the colors the culture of lahore what intrigued you towards uh, or rather move towards photography film making it is very natural when you are from lahore uh, and you have seen the festivities the colors uh, you are born with of course you have seen all these festivities around you so naturally you want to document that uh, not only for yourself but as a memory uh, to cherish that later on so photography came very naturally to me um, that i need to document that it started from from that point onwards um but then uh, i was bitten by the uh, traveling and uh, i started traveling Where and all? I, uh, yes what what are your favorite destinations in pakistan gilgit baltistan and kashmir there are two of my most favorite destinations they are uh, like, scenic yes they, not only look uh, like as andrew has added up that um, the hospitality is one thing that uh, that's is one trait that and uh, any place that is warmer because uh, is because only uh, by its people so it the is culture, not only yes the culture the the, the, the culture the hospitality yes a, a place can be naturally very beautiful like but if uh, the people are cold then, yes so it doesn't it, it, it is not a good place so uh, so the people and the hospitality that you find in kashmir and uh, gilgit baltistan uh, is strikingly very different than you find it in the other parts of the country uh, people are very much uh, warm very hospitable because i think so they are not as commercial as we people in the cities are naturally yes. naturally yes so um, i find uh, like he has been to hunza and he must have seen the, that the beauty that uh, that is there is remarkable you can like compare it to rather i i don't agree with that comparison but of course he has been to other countries and uh, uh, naturally a comparison uh, comes into the mind okay we you have seen that beautiful place so how you compare that with that but the only thing that makes a different is the people actually the nature is everywhere around you but uh, but what does your camera lens say which place does your camera lens love the most in pakistan it will be no doubt le punza punza it's, it's beautiful it's it's not only beautiful but there are so many shades so many colors uh, around you that uh, if he has been to uh, like uh, duka and duka is one place that uh, like we call it eagle nest as well uh, if you stand there and uh, you have a 360 degree perspective of all the mountains the valley beneath you the mountains did you here. go there Could, did you manage to go to this point I didn't. Uh, we was we were supposed to get up at 5 a.m. for the sunset. You said no. I'm not. No, the, it was the weather. Ah, oh, it was bad cloudy, weather. and right. there was a threat of rain. How scenic did you find Hunza? Uh, the thing is, I think maybe I visited not at the perfect time because it's late, you know it's early spring. Right. Um, I think um, autumn would be sensational. I really do, uh, Hina. Um, but nonetheless, for example, when I went to the Husseini Suspension Bridge, the views there are epic of the Pasar cones, and um, Hunza is quite a dry place, but it's quite—it's so vast and so high, and with so much snow and river, it's—it's it's pretty magical, I have to say. Right. So I believe, uh, like you said, you've you've been to India as well, correct? Yes. How do you compare Pakistan to India? Wow, you've just given me the hardest question. <laughs> uh, I've actually been to well. We I've, are two normal countries. Okay, no harm so comparing. It's just that we're neighbours. I've, I've been to Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, India, and Pakistan. I, I see a lot of similarities. I mean, of it's course. not surprising. I mean, it used to be the same country, right? The Absolutely. land is similar. The people are similar in some senses. Yeah, I've noticed a few differences, but you know, Delhi compared to Rawalpindi, it's pretty similar. um but i you know i think i've already alluded to this but um i find the people here are just at a, at a next level in terms of hospitality and i don't know if that's because it, pakistan doesn't have the same international profile as say perhaps sri lanka or india does 
but it's just next but what level. difference does that does that make i don't get it for example i've had a lot of friends that have been to india for example right, right? that it's a place that they go to goa or to um to dharamshala or wherever they choose to go i think here because maybe that pattern is not so strong the the, the no, tourist numbers are just not as big international tourist numbers yes yes, yes. so that's why i think that the people here are, are, are they don't are know different. how to be so commercial is that what you're saying they uh, i don't know about that i just think i just think that the warmth is just is different unbelievable it's, well, it's that's different well that's genetic i think yeah <laughs> right so yeah sir um you've traveled extensively in pakistan so what about the south side the south region of pakistan look we were talking about the beauty um but i think so the culture the cultural aspect of the southern side is um one thing that we forget the most because we are um, most of the time we just talk about the natural beauty natural like the highest mountains and the valleys and um, so north takes most of the charm uh, absolutely uh, yes. i get it but i think so if you start the south has its own beauty its, its own beauty uh, let me just like last week um, uh, let me share in the, i was in to cholistan cholistan is the desert that uh, we have in the south of punjab and is one of the like uh, biggest deserts that we have and there's a festival that is called chanan peer festival okay this is a like a traditional festival that happens and it goes on for 7 weeks 7 <laughs> weeks. weeks yes this is like uh, it starts on every thursday every thursday people gather but the fifth thursday is considered the most holy and the most uh, promising one so you find Hundred thousands of people that just come for that, and there is no hotels. People just they camp come. there. They actually. camp there. They Sounds camp. Sounds awesome. Yes, I love yeah, camping. Yeah, they camp there. Yeah, I, this, I've they heard of there that. In a traditional style, they came on the camels. They came on the carts. They came on the donkeys. They came with oh. the horses. They came on the tractor trolleys. So you find the vibrance. You find the culture. The buzz. Yes, the buzz there. You find. now that is the buzz that you cannot find that in the mountains but it, the desert has so mountains are quiet serene peaceful yeah. it's all about eat laugh pray but, <laughs> but this, this is this is, this is different this is thing. different but see this is also fascinating right like one of the things i wanted to do but it just didn't work out as i wanted to take the train from karachi to lahore that that's a fun but, ride but i just wonder that there's this we're talking about the north we're talking about the south Hmm. Maybe I have to mention Quetta, but what about the whole middle of the country? You know, that that that's t for me in my mind. I just haven't even considered that yet. Right. So, what are you referring to here? You see, now this is the northern areas. Islamabad is close to that. Yes. Then four hours by road, you're in Lahore, which where we are right now. Yes. Then you go further down, you Thank get you. South Punjab. Yes. That's got its own culture. It's Punjab, but it's very distinctively yes. beautiful. Right. The culture, um, and uh, there are many palaces there, and uh, um, from some from nice um, infrastructure, some uh, some uh, heritage culture that you find there. Then you go further down, and then comes uh, Sindh. Yes. Sindh. is a different province a different culture and it's gorgeous the food the meals the clothing everything's different the language is different but that is all limited to the rural areas in there that's called interior sin then you hit the metropolitan city of karachi yep. the city of lights where you see people from various ethnicities from pakistan various cultures various languages people are speaking different languages there and that's where everybody comes together and nobody gets bothered about where you from which city you're from what language do you speak yes it's it's a new york right okay right so on that note i'm going to take a break when we return we shall continue this discussion see you shortly i felt so safe here like for example when i went between uh swat and 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 gilgit Hmm. and police escort it's standard operating procedure for tourists so that's just something else for people to bear in mind like it it's it's well, a very safe place thank you for place. mentioning that thank yeah. you so much you must have tasted the biryani in karachi yeah i have i had to after i posted a 
photo of biryani in Islamabad on Twitter yes. and then everyone's like it doesn't count no, if it's, no, not it's not Karachi. real biryani yeah. <laughs> biryani for biryani you have to be in Karachi no yeah. Karachi is known yeah. for yeah. biryani yeah. you're right Before I um, get carried away with the conversation, let me show you a few pictures taken from Yasser's lens. Let's see it from his perspective, Pakistan. Well, that was Yasser's beautiful photography. And um, I'd like to find out, is there any place in Pakistan that you've missed? A lot of places like? uh, still in the list. Uh, I think so. the Balochistan is quite huge and quite... Yes, like we've also to come to the map. So, yes. Balochistan is yet to discover. So, then we have Balochistan. And uh, Gawadar is right there. Gawadar is right there. If you, you could brief Andrew about it, yes. please. Uh, it's the... Balochistan is very huge like you can see the 48 percent of the whole pakistan is Balochistan. Right. like from the uh, if you talk about the um, length and the uh, that voice so it is huge and it is uh, at one side it is the coastal side of pakistan so you have the whole 600 kilometers of coastal belt and you can drive around that and you can starting from karachi and you can reach Gwada. So that's the coastal side and it goes out, uh, till the Iran side. So uh, it has its own beauty, it has its deserts. You find a lot and lot of variety over there. Absolutely. So um, I think there's a lot more to discover and there's more to Pakistan that you need to see next time when you're here. So tell me once you go back, uh, are you going to mention Pakistan in your podcast? Well, my, my podcast that I'm making uh, is about uh, Bob Warmer, who coached Pakistan uh, between 2004 and 2007. Right, um, so there's a huge Pakistan element to it, uh, particularly that was the last team he coached before he sadly passed away. Um, so I'm sure I'll weave in some travel stories in there, uh, Hina. Um, but it's not just the podcast, it's, it's you know, I'm... I'm sharing my story to the people that, for example, you know, I'm friends with on Facebook. I'm, you know, I'm creating blogs. By this, you know, a recording of this show will help create more content. Hopefully, people share it more. So, definitely, whatever I do, you know, I'm going to be creating um, as much positivity. Some great content, I believe, because you've gathered so much here and all over the world. I must say. So I'm sure there's something amazing, amazing coming up. Well, let's hope so. Do you know I actually almost went to South Waziristan. You did? Yeah, I was getting interviewed um, in Islamabad and the journalist who interviewed me said, do you want to go to South Waziristan on Friday? I was like, yeah, let's... But it was an, organized by the army and I did, they didn't have enough time to process my clearance. Right, it takes but, time but for that. But that would have been pretty amazing. Well, that would have been a new chapter for you and for a good sure. one. Wow. Do that the next time that you hear. Yeah, well, I've So now that you know this clearance takes time, so you can be a little prepared and uh, arrange your trip accordingly. Yeah, I mean, what an experience that would have been to travel in the army helicopter and everything wow. with 15 other journalists. That should, that should have been fun, but well, next time. Yeah. Oh, Absolutely. So, um, the food that you've had here, how well did it settle in with your digestive system? Uh, well, I think I've got a pretty strong system. You know, I live in Indonesia. So you love, you're a meat lover? I've eaten so many kebabs, you know, you would not <laughs> believe it. Like, from the moment I arrived in Islamabad, just right. going out onto the street, all of the chicken kebabs, then it was beef. I haven't really had lamb. Um, 
In fact, I haven't had lamb. But I've eaten a lot of meat here. I'm pretty sure I'm put on some weight, but I haven't had any problems food-wise. Right. And do you enjoy meals in Indonesia? Uh, yeah, of course. You do? Yeah. Because that's got a very different food palette. Yeah. They eat a lot of spice. Actually, I haven't found the food here that spicy. That surprised me. I've handled it. You know, I haven't had that huge aftertaste in my mouth, which I get in Indonesia. Um, we don't. We're not big on spicy. I mean, we are, but not to an extreme level. Yes, there'll be places where you may find really, really spicy food, but not at large. Not at large. And especially when you talk about Khaybar Pakhtunkhwa, and even Balochistan, they just like to cook in salt or pepper. Right. Their meat is just marinated in that. The salt and pepper. In fact, it's Punjab and Sindh. They're Actually, has Karachi spicy. has some spicy food. Karachi yeah. has some real spicy food and it's delicious. But uh, in Punjab, I think uh, it's medium rare as I may say. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's the case. Right, so what else would you recommend to Andrew Yasser? I would recommend him Things to, to do here. You it could have, be a restaurant. Uh, from the foodie point of view, uh, I think so. You need to taste biryani. I must. Uh, you must have tasted the biryani in Karachi. Yeah, I have. I had to after I posted a photo of biryani in Islamabad on Twitter, uh, and then everyone's like, "It doesn't count." No, if it's, no, not it's from not real biryani. Yeah. <laughs> biryani for biryani, you have to be in Karachi. No, um, Karachi is known for uh, biryani. Uh, You're yes. right. Then you have to have halim as well. Yeah, halim is again. It's then mixed. You, it's it's wheat flour with yes. a lot of um, pulses. Yeah. It's a gorgeous dish. Very heavy on the stomach but it's delicious right so i'm going to show you a few images of new zealand and pakistan you know how intelligently we pick up these images and you cannot tell the difference which one's what let's see them Right, so before you were coming to Pakistan, people in Indonesia, friends from London, family in New Zealand, what opinion did they have of Pakistan? Uh, you know, I'm not going to lie, I think people um, thought I was taking a risk, that it might be dangerous. Um, my sister, for example, did. Um, I think she, she, was, was, she was a little naturally. skeptical. Um, but I think everyone was just quite surprised. You know, I remember one friend in London said, wow, you've picked Pakistan as a location. So he was really curious. You know, he's a bit of an outdoors type guy. Um, but I think it's just because people don't know Hina. That's, that's the issue. I mean, I, I can't think of one person I know that's been to Pakistan. I totally agree with you. And uh, Andrew, you know, as I interview a lot of travelers on this show, a lot of experts on this show and this is exactly what they say exactly the same thing of course families and friends they do get concerned as a foreigner if you're coming to pakistan but that is certainly not the case it's a safe country with good people the, host the hospitality is unmatchable as andrew also endorsed so well yeah sir uh, whatever travel you have done in your life which country do you think is very friendly, apart from Pakistan? Um, I have been to a few countries. Uh, I think so. I liked South Africa the most. Um, well, from the photography perspective, it's, it, it's gorgeous. Beautiful. It's beautiful, it's well. gorgeous. It is, it has, it like uh, takes all the marks that you like uh, you want to shoot Would and you, you agree want with to... him? Well I used to work for a South African bank in London so right. I, I've been to South Africa a few times and I'd, 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 I would agree definitely the hosting there that I had was always incredible right really really good and um, 
the, the, the beauty obviously is, is to die for in a place like Cape okay. Town, for example. So quickly, four or five things to do in New Zealand for a traveller, a tourist. Uh, Queenstown would be the first place to go. Kind of it reminds me of like a much grown, grown up version of say Atabad Lake in mm -hmm. Unza. Um, you should probably uh, do that first. I would, ha I would hire a car or maybe a camper van and drive around the South Island. It's the bigger of the two islands. Uh, it's huge really uh, in terms of land size, but there's not that many people there. That's it's really beautiful. So that'd be the first two. Um, I have never visited the north of New Zealand, believe it or not. The Bay of Islands is supposed to be pretty incredible, so that would probably be three. Uh, four would be try skiing. Try skiing, there's a lot of ski fields in New yeah, Zealand. Yeah, I hear about that, yes. Um, and number five, I guess, that's one that you just kind of discover by accident. Um, but I'm from Wellington, it's a beautiful city, but the weather's pretty dreadful And there. the capital as well. Yeah. Right. So keep these things in mind if you plan to go to New Zealand, but definitely do try and go. It's gorgeous, it's beautiful and good dairy products. For sure. Right? And we do get some of them in Pakistan as well. Yeah. So thank you, Andrew, and have a safe journey and hope to have you back on the show soon once you're here in Pakistan again. Absolutely. And I just, the last thing I just wanted to say is I've, I've, been, I've felt so safe here. Like, for example, when I went between uh, SWAT and, and, and Gilgit, hmm. a police escort, it's standard operating procedure for tourists. So that's just something else for people to bear in mind, like it, it's, it's well, a very Thank safe you for place. mentioning that, thank yeah. you so much. Yasser, wish you all the best with your new adventures, with your new um, explorations that you have in mind when you're going to photograph places and uh, I'm sure there'll be greater work that we shall see you produce in future. Sure, Thank sure, you definitely. so much. You. I shall see you next week, same time. You keep watching Discover Pakistan.